Hey guys, Dr. Sangeeta back with you for another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and today's topic is the access cavity preparation. So today's topic will cover the access cavity and in the upcoming video we will cover the anatomy of the canals of each tooth. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. That way you get a notification as soon as I release a video lecture for you. Now talking about the excess cavity preparation. This is preparing a cavity. As the name indicates, accessing the cavity, preparing and accessing the cavity. So preparing a cavity to access the root canals in order to remove all the pulpal tissues, in order to remove all the root canal, we are accessing into the root canal. So we want to access the root canal, we should know the anatomy of the pulp. So be before removing the pulp, we should know the anatomy of the pulp and the methods to determine pulpal anatomy. We have the clinical methods and the in vitro method. Now talking about the clinical methods, the anatomic studies, radiograph, exploration, visualization, endogram, fiber optic endoscopy, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI and dental operating microscope. And if we talk about the in vitro method, we have the scanning electron microscope scope sectioning microcomputer tomography and the cone bean computer tomography cbct talking about the anatomical studies these are gaining knowledge from the anatomy of the root gaining uh, the knowledge from the anatomy of the tooth so this is done by my lecture so it is done by reading from the books so from reading the books we are getting to know the anatomy of the root anatomy of the pulp anatomy of the root canals so the another one method is the radiograph. Now radiograph is actually a useful method in assessing the radio, the root canal anatomy. But see the radiographs, if we talk about the IOPRs. So the IOPRs are actually a two-dimensional, uh, a two. this is a two-dimensional picture of a three-dimensional subject. So radiograph are not exactly tells us about the root canal anatomy, about the anatomy of the uh, roots and an anatomy of the canals, but it is again, it is a good and useful method in assessing in day-to-day -day life. So radiographs are, are an important method actually. So also we have high resolutions computer tomography. Now these high resolutions uh, uh, images, they are the 3D pictures of root canal using a computer imaging. So from a computer we are getting a 3D picture and the computer is processing the image. Also we have endoscopy, the fiber optic endoscope. Now these endoscopes, they are fiber optic. So these optic, they have a rod or lens. So these have, they have the magnifying uh, intracanal visualization so we can enlarge the views inside the canals and we can see in case if any calcification is there or anything is there so fiber optic endoscopy is a good method to visualize the anatomy of the canals and because there's a new method actually of magnifying intracanal visualization using fiber optic endoscope so these fiber optic endoscopes are actually known as oroscopes oroscope or the rod lens endoscope so also we have visualization endograms. Now these visualization endogram are actually is a technique. They are using, we are using irrigants in this technique and irrigants are helping us visualization the canal on the radiographs. So there is a solution which we are using is the Ruddle solution. So the Ruddle solution is a solution in by which we are irrigating all the root canals and then we are taking the radiograph. Now while taking while we are taking the radiographs, these all the pulpal anatomy, all the anatomy of the canal, these uh, on the radiograph, this anatomy is a radio opaque. So these are a white color radio opacity is seen in the canal. So we are using Ruddle solution for this. Also, we have MRIs. Now, these MRI produces data on the computer which help us knowing in the canal morphology and we can also use the exploration technique. So, on reaching the pulp floor, once we see the pulp floor, we can see the orifices as the dark color. So, once we see the floor of the pulp, so we can see the dark color spots. Now, that all the dark color spots we see are actually the root canal, are actually the orifices. So, this is a map. 
which we can see that so this is known as the dental map in which the grooves and the anatomic lines are dark in color which connect the canal orifices so this is a dentinal map we can say now coming to the in vitro methods we have sectioning in which the tooth is sections longitudinally the tooth is sections and is this visualized for the root canal system also we have radio on contrasting media so we are using s contrasting media or we are using sem study also sem analysis is a scanning electronic microscopic analysis now this also evaluates the root canal anatomy and we have cbct a cone beam computed tomography this also tells about the morphology of the root about the morphology of the canal so radiograph is very important diagnostic for assessing the anatomy of the canal anatomy of the pulp so and also some dentists use some endodontist actually use magnifying loops now these magnifying loops has the magnifying glasses which are attached to the glasses they help us to see the enlarged view so they have these enlarged uh, 5x zoom like they they have these zooms so we can enlarge it and see the all the canal anatomy and we can wear these loops as a spectacles but these are again expensive not everyone can buy it so talking about the excess cavity preparation we are accessing into the cavity to access the root canal so the first bar which we which we used to restore which we used to actually uh, clear off the heavy restored tooth so if a teeth is heavily restored so we need to first remove all the restoration or if a tooth is having a cap for example if we are doing a re root canal treatment so we have to cut the cap or if we are removing all the amalgam or all the heavy restoration we have to use the transmetal burr now to this transmetal burr is our tungsten carbide burr which we use it which we used to cut the crown which we used to cut the amalgam or the metal so this tungsten carbide burr is the transmetal burr which we used to access if in case of any heavy restoration is there if in case a crown is there so if crown is not there then we directly start from our round burrs which is our round burr are actually the round so these are known as round burr because they are round in shape now these round burrs round carbide burrs we use to enter the roof of the pulp chamber and we don't use we don't do all of the preparation with the round burr this is just for the initial preparation so round burr we use just to enter the roof of the pulp chamber now we have already covered the roof of the pulp chamber the pulp chamber so i am not going to repeat it again if you haven't watched the video watch the previous video to understand all the terminology better so round burr we are using to access into the to enter into the roof of the pulp chamber now we have different sizes of round burr number 2 round burr number 4 round burr number 6 round burr the 2 round burr as you can see is the smallest burr so it is used for a narrow pulp chambers and the narrow canal because this is the small one so we use it for the mandibular anterior teeth and also for the maxillary premolar number 4 round burr we have is the medium size so this is used for the maxillary anterior and the mandibular premolars and number 6 is the largest size of round burr and it is used for the tooth having large pulp chamber so we use it for the uh, molar teeth so the round end cutting tapered diamond burr is our uh, endo excess burr so endo excess bar is the round end cutting taper diamond excess bar so this is the endo excess bar uh, from the company of dents fly and this bar has has the cutting edges on the round surface on the round tip as well as on the shank now you can see this carbide bar this carbide bar has the cutting edges on the round surface as well as on the shank so this is helping us penetrating into the pulp chamber into the roof of the pulp chamber now that we have the access to pulp chamber so if this is our teeth this is the pulp initially we have used the round burr and when we have reached the pulp chamber so for the initial penetration of the pulp chamber we are using this endo excess burr as the name suggests this is the endo uh, this burr is used in the endo for excess cavity so this is our endo excess burr this is a specially designed burr and once we reach up to the vents we penetrate into the roof of the pulp chamber we should not do all of the cavity preparation with this endo burr because we may uh, damage the we may perforate the pulp floor because of the forcation now initially once you start using the endo excess burr all the time and you are not using any other burr for the 
further further going into the pulp then there are high chances that you may perforate or you may enter into the forcation area so after the endo excess burr we are using the excess refining burr these are the endo z burrs which are from again from the dense ply company so these are the safety tip tapered burr now these burrs are actually while we are going deep so they are preventing the perforation so we are not going so these burr have a non cutting tip but the cutting side the, so the shaft the side ends are the cutting edge and the tip is non cutting so we are not actually perforating it but it is cutting the side so this is widening the all of the pulpal floor all of the pulp chamber so this burr is really very good because this is preventing the perforation on the pulpal floor and this has a non cutting tip and only the shank is the cutting now the next step is our widening of the uh, canal orifices now if we talk about the gg drills there is a new concept that we don't use gg drill for the excess cavity preparation though we use it for the post and course but we don't use for enlarging and flaring the orifices previously gg drill was used now this has the lining based on the size one size is the smallest and then the lining increase the size also increases for gg drill now these gg drills are actually used for enlarging and flaring the orifices of the canal because we want a straight line excess the objective of the excess cavity preparation is that the first objective is that the straight line excess to the orifice and we are reaching to the apex in a straight line so this is the main objective of the excess cavity preparation of the root canal treatment and the second main objective is the de roofing of the pulp chamber now straight line excess there are again controversies because straight line excess if we are going through the straight line excess then we are removing all of the two structure and the, we are again destroying one of the main objective which is the conservation of the tooth structure so if we are using using a gg drill then we are uh, going or uh, we are following a straight line excess a straight line path into the root canal but again this 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 obeys the one of the objective which is conservation of the root and the tooth structure which we are disobeying it but again in india we don't use a single file for one patient we are we repeat the file for multiple cases so there is high chances that we may break the file that's the reason that we should follow the straight line excess principle and we should also de roof the pulp chamber now all of the pulp chamber like pulp horns this is one of the main thing for the success for the key success of a root canal treatment that if we want a root canal treatment to be successful then we should remove all of the pulp chamber all of the pulp horns we should remove because there we are if we are leaving this this is the housing for bacteria later on so there is a ch high chances that the acid is going to fail so we have to remove all of the pulp chamber pulp horn so this is very important that we de roof the pulp chamber to expose the pulp horn and once we expose the pulp horn and we can see the orifices so exposing and de roofing the pulp chamber is actually reaching us to the orifices and thereby to the root canal so this is an important objective for a root canal treatment so this is the reason that we don't use gg drill nowadays because this obi is the objective of the conservation of the root structure but gg drill is used for shaping the orifices so it is used for flaring and widening of the orifices widening of the canals accessing into the cavity we should first know the anatomy of the root and the root canal so in the upcoming consecutive videos we are going to study the root anatomy and the canal anatomy of anterior premolars and molars so that's pretty pretty much about the excess cavity that's pretty much about the today's lecture if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment below and give it a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet and if you enjoy watching our videos and i'll see you next time